Greetings everybody and welcome to Madrid Ball. I hope you all are doing good. Real Madrid have the winning streak halted by the men in yellow. We had a lot of position but we lacked the penetration on the night and as things stood, a resolute defensive performance from Cadiz was enough to stop the lost plan calls from securing the three points. It was a very frustrating game when we saw the opposition having the mentality to sit back from the first minute of the game. We knew that Cadiz were not here to play free-flowing, beautiful and entertaining football. They rather had a specific plan, they had the faith that using the low block, they would be able to contain Madrid at the Bernabeu, and credit to the managers and the players. They were able to stay disciplined, they were able to shut up shop, they maintained their focus for the entire 90 minutes, and the old enemy of Real Madrid, the low block, once again came back to haunt the Los Blancos. It was a dull evening without goals, certainly not the kind of game you want to watch late into the night, but in the end, the two teams had no other option but to share the spoils of a goalless stalemate. So in this video, we'll do the post-match analysis of Real Madrid vs Cadiz. We'll talk about the performance of the players, and without further ado, let's get started. And having a look at the lineup, we got the exact same lineup that we had predicted in the match preview. There was Coto and Goal in the back line, Lucas Vasquez slotted in for the injured Danny Carvajal. In the midfield, we had Valverde, Casemiro, and Tony Cruz. And in attack, we had Vinicius, Benzema, and Eden Hazard. And today, we would be skipping the shout-out section, because none of you predicted a stalemate. But if we talk a bit about the lineup, we all were interested to see how Eden Hazard was going to fare in the game, what formation was Ancelotti going to choose, and how exactly was he going to position Hazard in order to get the best out of him. And as things stood, Ancelotti stuck with the 4-3-3 formation. There was no tinkering with that, he placed Hazard on the right wing. You can see in this picture he was positioned on the right flank, and from the post-match thoughts of Ancelotti, we can infer that he was given instructions to go outside, and we could see that from time to time. But it was also evident that he was given some amount of liberty to operate in central areas. We saw he was cutting inside, linking up with Benzema, but if we pass a judgement on his performance, he had some good moments, he was successful in troubling the Cadiz defence at times, but my expectation from Hazard is much, much more. I totally understand that since it was his first start, we cannot expect him to be playing with good level of sharpness, but I think we all can agree that Hazard is in a very sticky situation. The chances are going to be limited for him, we'll probably see the right wing getting occupied by other players. We know Angelotti clearly prefers the likes of Gareth Bale, Rodrigo, or Asensio on the right wing, so most probably Hassan will have one or two more games to show his qualities before those players return. He needs at least one big performance under his belt if he wants to create more chances of featuring an Angelotti starting 11. And about yesterday's performance, I definitely thought there were some positives that we could derive from his performance. He grew into the game in the second half, showed some flakes, some nice movement, but I also found it was another missed opportunity to impress the coach. In the first half, his involvement was minimal. In the second half, he was much more active, but these performances are not going to bench any of the players in the starting 11, assuming that Angelotti sticks with the 4-3-3 formation. So let's see how Hazard fares in the game against Athletic. I do think he'll get more chances to impress the coach and the Madridistas. He's lacking rhythm at the moment. He'll probably need two or three more games to get to the level that would please the coach. And let's hope he can have a solid performance there and take one step forward in reigniting his Real Madrid career. And talking about the first half in general, we were the team in possession. We were the team who were pinning back the Cadiz defence. Many of the attacks were happening to the right. Lucas Vasquez and Fede Valverde exchanged rules from time to time. When Vasquez went forward, we could see Valverde would cover up for the fullback and take care of the defensive duties. But Lucas Vasquez, as we saw, didn't have the best of performances. He could not create much trouble in attack. His decision making wasn't good on the night and he couldn't deliver high quality crosses, causing much frustration to the manager and his teammates. The situation was similar with Mendy as well. He couldn't come up with any meaningful contribution in attack. And Luke Cadiz were having such an attitude as if they were saying Real Madrid, come on, show us what you got, show us if you can break us down, and that's how they set up as well. Sometimes they had five in the back line, sometimes they had six, all the players solely focused on defending, there were no space in between the lines, making it very difficult for Real Madrid. Teams get frustrated dealing with such opponents, fans get frustrated seeing such defensive play, but teams like Cadiz see it as the best approach to take points away from the big boys. They see that they don't have the flair and attack and sit back, for them, staying resolute in defence is the only way out to prevent any damage and you can't really blame them. Each manager has a different outlook towards the game. Each faces different challenges. If a manager is successful in taking points away from the big boys using such a tactic, then they have every right to use it. And I personally think these different tactics provide much more flavour to the game. It makes things unpredictable. And also if you see on the other side of things, this game showed Real Madrid that they need to be much more quick with their thinking and ball progression. We need to see more of one-touch passing and movement, and we probably could have been better in the final third had we moved the ball 
a little bit quicker yesterday. It also turned out that the Cadiz manager had a specific plan to stop Vinicius Jr. In the post-match press conference, he spoke about the tactics he used to stop Vinicius Jr. He said, We decided to give Vinicius space to go towards the baseline but instructed our players that every time he tried to cut inside, they had to close him down and be there. He further said for Hassan, we didn't plan anything specifically, but for Vinicius, that's what we went for, given the baseline so that he could cross, but never the centre. So we did see that the defenders did very well to carry out the instructions of the manager, Kala and Akapo were on the toes to deal with the movement of Vinicius, and to their credit, they were successful in cutting out the threat from the Brazilian. Benzema as well wasn't on top of his game, he had just one training session after recovering from a minor knock, so probably he wasn't 100% ready and was a bit conservative in stretching his legs. And lastly, Angelotti, as a last resort, attempted to switch the position of David Alaba. He took Mendy off, Nacho took the position of a centre-back, and Alaba was asked to go forward, deliver some quality crosses, but maybe Angelotti was a bit late in using that tactic. There wasn't much time left when Angelotti made that change and Cadiz were successful in keeping a clean sheet and keeping Madrid at bay. So overall, it was a disappointing result. We have dropped two points and we look forward to the final game of the year, but Angelotti has another major headache as he would have to take on Athletic without the presence of Carlos Casemiro. He picked up a yellow card yesterday and he could have picked up a red too, but that yellow card means that he would be suspended for the game against Athletic. We'd probably see Kavinga in the starting 11 to fill in for Casemiro, but against a team like Athletic, who have a very physical style of play, Angelotti would have been better off had he had Casemiro available for the game. So let's see what defensive mechanism Angelotti would use in the game. It's likely that we would be missing Modric as well, so the upcoming game would surely be a good test for the youngsters in the side. So those are my thoughts regarding the game, and let's conclude this video by hearing the thoughts of Carlo Angelotti. The coach first assessed the performance of the team as she said, I'm satisfied with the team's commitment and can't fault them at all. I'm very happy when we win, even if we play badly. If we play badly and lose, I'm not happy. If we play well and don't win, I'm still happy. So I'm happy tonight. We tried everything from the first minute to the last. It didn't work out for us today. We missed a little bit of quality in the final 30 meters, but there's nothing to criticize. Games like these can happen sometimes. There's a lot of positives to take away from this match. The only thing that's not positive is we didn't get the three points tonight. Then the coach was asked about the performance of Eden Hazard. He said he struggled a bit to get into the game in the first half, just like the rest of the team. He did better in the second half. You're right when you see that he struggled a bit more on the outside and he's not used to playing on the right. He linked up well with Karim. Hazard is obviously another weapon that we've got now in the second half of the season. And lastly, Angelotti spoke about the importance of Luka Modric in the side. He said Luka is a very important player for us. He was performing really well and he had this problem. There's no issue. This week was a bit of an odd one, but I think that the team tried its best and was committed. I can't fault them and we now have to look after ourselves. Everyone has to look after themselves at the moment because I think that the people's health is the most important thing and we have to fight together against this virus. So that concludes the post-match analysis of Real Madrid versus Cadiz. Do let me know your thoughts on the game and what did you make about the performance of the players. I'll see you soon. Till then, take care. Glory to Madrid. And as always, a la Madrid.